Pakistani Southern Belle, A Year in Review, published December 2023 by Nadia Ilahi. Hit the play button to listen to this post, edited by Victoria Boutros, or read below. Also, note some words and phrases have been hyperlinked if you need to catch up on a previous post. What a year it has been for me. I started this year not truly knowing what the year would entail. The first blog post I penned in February was all about embarking on this new journey, the teaching sabbatical I was taking for a full year from February 2023 to February 2024. I had planned to pen new blogs while editing a manuscript of my past blog posts into a book of essays. Well, as you may know, that project took a detour. Officially, my sabbatical ends on December 17th, which is also the official end date of the fall 2023 semester, as my sabbatical's duration was for the spring 2023 semester, which ended in June, and the fall 2023 semester, which ends this month. I didn't teach in the summer, opting to enjoy a much-desired summer break, attaching the extra hiatus to my teaching sabbatical to equal a full year off. But what can I sum up about this year? Well, it has certainly been an incredible year, to say the least. As I pen this in the middle of December, the year not quite over, there's still much that can transpire, but for now, some reflection. When I started my sabbatical, I was so hopeful and excited of what the year could bring. And now that it is nearly over, I will say that there has been some major highs coupled with some major lows. I'll try my best to keep this post short, but I just want to spend a little time reflecting on what the year has been like for me. My holiday photo greeting card, which is the featured photo for this post, is something I have been doing since 2015. I have written about this in a former blog, Flying Solo for the Holidays, as far as sharing how I feel that even we single ladies need to celebrate our lives and years minus having kids or a husband to showcase in a holiday greeting card. And for me... These are the pictures I wanted to share with my close friends and family on my Christmas card list, illustrating my highlights of 2023. At the end of this post is the backside of said picture, me blowing magical Disney snow and wishing you all love. For me, 2023, the year I took 47 trips around the sun, I had one major high, Developing a television show based on my blog with Story Mail Entertainment in Columbus, Georgia. Embarking on an even newer journey than the break from teaching I thought would take center stage this year. That alone has been a huge milestone for me this year, hands down. But with it, I noticed a string of events. Here's what I did notice right away. Some folks started treating me differently and not in a good way. And some folks, fortunately, aligned themselves with me in the most supportive and encouraging ways, making me feel less scared and nervous than what my usual anxiety-filled nature would feel when someone wants to offer me a pot of gold by making a TV show based on my life's work's subject matter, me. However, there were some big lows for me this year as well. My family and I said goodbye to a special lady in our family, my aunt, my Pupa Bali, who passed away earlier this year. I honored her memory with a special blog post, Hello, My Monkey. And on a more personal matter, I did have my heart broken by a dude I cared deeply for. He just didn't feel the same way about me, and it hurt immensely. On paper, we're probably not compatible. At least that's what I must tell myself to feel better, despite wanting to always reach out to him first when something happens to me, wanting to share with him a lot of the things that I have done this year. It's made me very sad and lonely sometimes. But at the same time, I know how extremely resilient and strong I am. So I will be, no, I am okay. Since then, it is a bit better as I do see him from time to time and I remain polite and cordial to him and especially to his sweet little pup. 
In my last blog post, I boasted about taking a lover, in the very sense of the word, someone to literally have an intimate relationship with, and nothing else. It has been liberating, embracing the kind of freedom I didn't think I could have at this point in my life. I am grateful. Girls can have that kind of fun too, you know, despite society's double standard placed on us. I am also grateful that sharing about that was both helpful and empowering to not only me, but to my readers as well. And that, dear audience, means the most to me. During these highs and lows, there were other wonderful experiences that happened. I got to visit family and friends in the South this past April, traveling to Atlanta, Monroe, and New Orleans during a time that is usually devoted to grading papers and teaching classes during a busy spring semester. And then for the Thanksgiving holiday, my mother came out for two weeks, and I was gifted with much-needed quality time with her time that is usually spent, as well, with teaching and grading papers. All in all, this sabbatical from teaching was exactly what I needed when I needed it. But like all good things, it must come to an end soon. Meanwhile, to update you where things are with the television production of Pakistani Southern Bell, a.k.a. PSB, due to both the SAG and WGA strikes, a lot was put on hold, But things are slowly gaining movement since the strikes are over now. As I stated, the manuscript I was editing has taken a detour for now, and I have been crafting and finalizing a show Bible for PSB, a detailed outline of what a season one could look like with complete show and character descriptions. Aside from working on that, I have also been cranking out new content for this blog, which you've read or listened to this year. And I am currently in the pursuit of nailing down a literary manager, and in the agreement with Story Mill, they plan to collaborate towards naming me showrunner, creator, head writer, and executive producer. There's still much development ahead to fully maintain those titles, but yours truly is certainly up for the task, not to mention completely grateful for the opportunity to do so. And lastly, Story Mill and I will be working on promoting the brand of PSB. So you may just see an animated Nadia attached to this blog soon. My somewhat animated Disney princess dreams might come true. I'm excited for 2024 and I look forward to what is to come. Much gratitude must be given to all my friends and family whose support and love has meant so much to me and has helped to create the Pakistani Southern Belle I am today. And lastly, to all of you out there who have been reading these blogs since 2017 or reading and listening this year, if you've been new to my world, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I wish you all a happy holiday season and a great start to the new year. And with that, I'd like to end with a little scene for you, a teaser perhaps, my version of an end credit scene, of something to come or for absolutely nothing to come. Either way, I hope you smile and enjoy. Interior, Foreman's Tavern, Neighborhood Bar, Toluca Lake, California, December 12th, 2023, day. Nadia sits at her usual corner spot bar stool working on her laptop, AirPods tucked in her ears with a half-empty glass of a vodka soda resting near her, along with a small glass mason jar of Foreman's spicy rosemary mixed nuts. Nadia, ensconced in her work, nearly doesn't hear a handsome gentleman asking her a question. Handsome gentleman, are you a writer? Nadia, I'm sorry, what was that? Nadia pulls her AirPods out of her ears. Handsome gentleman, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I was asking if you're a writer. Nadia, uh, yeah, I'm a college professor. She smiles. Handsome gentleman, oh, what do you teach? Nadia, English and literature. Handsome gentleman, oh, cool. I'm handsome gentleman, by the way. Puts his hand out to shake Nadia's. Nadia, Nadia Ilahi, nice to meet you, handsome. Handsome gentleman, looks like you have the best spot. I'm across, over there, getting some work done myself. Points to the other side of the bar, where Nadia sees a laptop and drink at the center community table. Nadia, 
Yeah, I get here around noon to grab this spot. Handsome gentleman. Come here a lot? Nadia. I'm here most Tuesdays. I'm on a teaching sabbatical. Nadia and handsome gentleman chat for a bit, the usual pleasantries of meeting someone new, where Nadia learns handsome gentleman runs a private jet company and once lived in Lafayette, Louisiana. Handsome gentleman. Are you on LinkedIn? Nadia. No, not on LinkedIn. Handsome gentleman. Instagram? Would love to stay in touch. Nadia. Yes, I'm on Instagram. Sure, that'd be nice. Handsome gentleman. Cool. Handsome gentleman pulls out his phone and passes it to Nadia for her to type in her Instagram handle, and handsome gentleman clicks to follow Nadia. Exterior, Toluca Lake neighborhood, later that evening. Nadia is out on one of her evening walks. It's a chilly December night for L.A., and Nadia is snuggled in her maroon, puffy, quilted jacket, beanie adorned on top of her head, hands inside her comfy, open fingers Wonder Woman gloves. Around her wrist is a small keychain with her apartment key and necessary pepper spray. She listens to her music, enjoying the crisp air, to-go cup in hand, filled with a bit of red wine. As she listens to Depeche Mode's Ghost Again, the tune is interrupted by back-to-back Instagram notifications. Handsome Gentleman is liking some of Nadia's posts before following up with a direct message. So nice to meet you today, Nadia. Would love to stay in touch. Maybe we can meet up sometime. Nadia smiles, continues on her walk. Fade to black.